episode been, eight fucking team. Yeah, that's us. Hey, I've been driving a lot, so I I'm, I haven't <laughs> had any contact. I'm, I'm seriously lacking vitamin D. So if it gets weird, I mean more weird than it usually is. <laughs> I mean, so you I, drove from you drove from Calgary to Fort Lauderdale this week, Dan? Yeah, I've been staring into the infinite void, and the infinite void stared back at me while giving the finger. <laughs> the question it, is, did did you get to drive on Route sixty six? No, that's like that's like down that's by east west. Yeah, it's like down. Fuck I know. I'm not. I, I know nothing of America. I know well, they have they have a president and stuff. Mm-hmm, they do. It's, it says where it goes, like right right in the song. I get my kicks on Route sixty six. <laughs> I was like making up songs on the on the way, like in different like variations. Like so, I was in Chattanooga. And I decided that's the perfect time to break out my German <laughs> German <laughs> singer. It, I'm not I'm not sure I follow your line of logic there. Is man. is this the Chattanooga Chutin Chutin? That was my <laughs> I, Is it just to do the Chattanooga Cho Cho? Chutin Chutin? So that So what got, you're saying is you spent entirely too much time alone this last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean I was it was touch and go there for a little while, but I'm I'm back, man! Hooray! Yeah, I, das ist nicht eine Chuchu. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nelson would know; he's got the German blood. <laughs> nice, somewhere nice. in me, deep, deep inside. Well, I've, I've never seen anybody talk as much about currywurst as you do. So. Oh, dude, currywurst is the shit. I love that stuff. <laughs> is that like spatzel? Is that like spatzel? Or no, no, no. Because I, I love spatzel. Like that's my favorite. Spatzel. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, you know, spatzel. Spatzel. <laughs> no? And then bratwursts. Yeah, yeah. Gotta, gotta yeah. give me a bratwurst. All right. <laughs> all right. We're all here. Yeah, we are. The Who's gang's all here. all here. Who's been playing what? Yeah. How, what have I been playing? Well, I, I started playing. We'll start with you. Go, Dan. Thanks. Go. What uh, a guy who's been driving across the country for a week. Uh huh. Well, while I was driving. <laughs> But I could have, I could have very much easily uh, started up um, Spelunky. Uh, but I, I mean, I started up, but I, I, I really, <laughs> I knew you were talking about this before the show. I didn't get it past the tutorial. Oh god. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand that game. Maybe I need to uh, get a little deeper into it. But uh, it takes a little while. It really does. I think it's starting to set its hooks in Nelson now. A little uh, bit. Little he said he beat it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he beat Olmec. Well, he beat one thing. He uh, beat he beat he beat the fake boss, the, fake not the boss? actual boss. Oh, I won it on easy mode. Now I have to do NG plus. Yeah, NG plus. Okay, I, I mean I started at normal. Maybe that was my problem. No, there is no actual <laughs> difficulty setting. I'm I'm just fucking around. Okay, <laughs> he's just talking out his ass. But uh, yeah, there, there's there's like one ending, and then there's an actual ending after that. Yeah. So okay, okay. Well, that's, that's something what I... about an eggplant. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Oh God, eggplant runs. Jesus. Eggplant. God damn it. Yeah. That's if you take a, a present. If you buy a present from the uh, from the store, mm-hmm. and then sacrifice it on the altar, you get an eggplant. But it has to be the purple present. Does it have to be a specific present? I, I don't it was know. Just any present. What the fuck I... are you guys talking about? <laughs> oh, just you wait, Dan. Once you start playing more Spelunky, you'll be like, just fucking mainline it, man. These are English words, but they're not sentences. I don't... <laughs> Spelunky is a deep, dark rabbit hole that you can go down. <laughs> it really is. It's, it's... I mean, Yeah, like it looks great. It looks fucking great. And then, like, I love the little tools they give you. And I love the little like nuances in the, in the, in the gameplay. But put it, it goes all, down like, a lot together. deeper. It goes down a lot deeper than so, you think. Too. Oh, should I, should I have like a controller? Because oh yes, oh yes. Yeah. If you're trying if you're trying to play it with a mouse and keyboard, you're doing it wrong. That's probably the problem right there. Xbox yeah, you 360 need a controller. controller is kind of like your bo- bottom basement minimum requirement to entry. Uh, if you can get a PS4 or I'm not sure if PS3 controllers can hook up through Bluetooth to a PC with but, some middleware. Uh, okay, yeah, middleware. yeah. I think same thing with PS4. You gotta install that. Uh, X input or whatever, but yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, anything with a, with um, bumper buttons, trigger buttons, X, Y, B and A, a start, a pause, and a really fucking good D pad. Yeah, the D pad is what makes or breaks you. I okay. still play it with the analog sticks. That that, that makes me kind of weird. I guess. Oh yeah, no, I my that run that I did uh, that you were watching, I did that purely with analog, and 
it makes it a little bit more twitchy. So yeah, a good D-pad will help you significantly. Okay. Yeah, I, I watched Nelson's no stream. It. Yeah. I Nelson's stream. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, guys, you, you got to go on our channel and uh, and 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 on YouTube and Facebook and, and take a look at our quick plays and stuff that we have up there. It's it's pretty cool. Yep. So yeah, check that out. Um, or go to thebackspace.ca. Now, now I'm admitting that I haven't seen it yet, so I'm <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to see it. Maybe. Well, I did tweet it. I did tweet it. Yeah. Cool. Um, so that's kind of what I was playing. I, I tried playing Dark Souls 1. Fuck that mm-hmm. game. <laughs> uh, but it's it's great. It's great. What, what do you mean, fuck that game? I don't I mean, understand. What's... Like, I, Okay, so there's like the... I, I, I haven't... Okay. I, I, did, I really set myself not to cheat. Not to look mm-hmm. up anything, try to discover it on my own, but I, that that is the problem. You can't. You can't do that. You have, you have to, to. Yes, you have to look up what to do yeah. next. Yeah, that game. That game does not hold your hand in no. any way. Uh, no. Your first time you play that, you won't. You won't get anywhere until no. you actually decide what it is. Like you have to go into that game with a good idea of what build you want to do, which which areas you're going to go to, and stuff like that. It's just it's it's essential. And yeah, how badly so... you want your bum to hurt afterwards. <laughs> Well, so I, I try to get past a certain level, and all the doors were locked, and there's no clear way of getting past it. And I know, like, all right, this is fucked up. But there's one easy way that you can go that leads to certain death, which is what, one of the things I always loved about <laughs> that game. The area that's right beside the starting area is absolute murder if you go into it. <laughs> Good that's probably like where... the graveyard or the yeah. catacombs. That's you, probably you where Dan went. There. That's probably where I was at. Yeah, it's a bunch of skeletons everywhere. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you don't want to go there. They, they, they just need a hug. That's all they want. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't hey, they a new adventure. Complete. Hug me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tried. Only... Don't go that way. I swear it was at, like, fuck this. <laughs> no, that's not where you're supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the easiest. It's the easiest place to, like, it's the path of least resistance, but yeah. it, it's also the way that will lead to utter anguish. Oh, boy. Yeah, first I wasn't killing anybody because I thought, okay, well, these guys look very uh, dilapidated and uh, like, what possible harm can they do to me? <laughs> anything in that game can kill you if you're not on your game. Yeah. Anything anything in that game can kill you. Even merchants. Even oh, yeah. Merchants, like, what? That, mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah. I don't want to play this game, game, do I? Yeah, you do. Uh, man. <laughs> can, wait, can I jump into two? For, uh, um, yeah, yeah, two instead of one. Do I have to? Would I have had to have played one to enjoy two, or can I just jump? It's another one of those things. It's another one of those Japanese RPG things where they have the same name and a lot of the same mechanics, but really fundamentally, they're completely separate games. Okay, maybe that's what it'll do. It's 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 like Final Fantasy. I mean, you know, they all stand alone. They they carry over some things from one to the next, and there are some common story threads. But really, honestly, you're not going to be missing much if you go straight into Dark Souls two. Yeah, because I was debating on picking up one, and then I heard how much of a pain in the ass it is to just get it to run. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I'm here yeah. Too. I finally got it working on my computer, but yeah, it took some doing. And um, yeah, apparently the second one is going to be a much more competent port. Because the, the first one was like, everybody was like, yeah, we need a PC version of this. And it was like a developer who had never done a PC version before. <laughs> so, yeah, so. it doesn't. It doesn't even run unaltered. Like it, it won't work. It just flat out won't work. So you run this batch file, and the game <laughs> might work this time. <laughs> yeah, you have to get DS fix. You have to change. You have to change like permissions on a bunch of different folders. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Wow. So I mean, fuck that. Yeah, but it's it's a really good game. <laughs> it's a so really I've, good game. So you've been playing it? Yeah. 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 Do you yeah, want to talk about it or Dark Souls? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got two characters on the go. I've got a strength build and a dex build going. And uh, I'm having some difficulty with both of them right now. Right. Uh, it's one of those things where you get to a certain point in the game and you realize that everything you've done is wrong and you have to start over again. And oh if, if, you haven't done, if you haven't done that at least a couple of times, then you're not really playing Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I just Google the strats. Yeah, yeah. You, you can do that too. But, I mean, yeah, it's just... it's. I don't know. It, it's it's a frustrating game, but it's it's one of those games where it's it's so good and like everything when everything's working, when everything's flowing properly, it, it's just it's real good. So, uh, I've been trying to kind of play a bit of the Dark Souls and Demon Souls just to 
get ready for Dark Souls 2. So yeah. yeah, prepare your anus for Dark Souls 2. You mean <laughs> because they're going in dry? Is that is that why? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that Dark Souls 2 is a much more uh, user friendly experience, but time will tell. I saw the quick look on uh, Giant Bomb, and they seem to mm-hmm. be enjoying it. Other than the sort of very you know. Uh, uh, Crunchy sound effects, very eight bit sound effects. Maybe it was an early build or not or something. But, um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I mean, it did look like there was an actual logical flow to it with the lighting of candles to sort of open up new areas. Whereas the first one, you know, they didn't really have that. You know, that sort of there was no hand holding whatsoever at all. No, no. yeah, no. Well, I mean, there's there's NPCs. Actually, the the weird thing about Dark Souls is. If you don't read the descriptions on your items and stuff like that, you won't have any idea what you're doing. <laughs> cool. <Right. laughs> like you have to actually look into the lore and you have to talk to all of the NPCs, <clears throat> exhaust all their dialogue options and stuff like that, and then you might have a better picture of what's actually going on. Uh, but the, the lore of that game is really hidden. Like it's it's really tucked away. There is a story there though, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah. There is. But you, but you have to talk to everybody in the game to kind of piece it together. And you have to read the item descriptions and stuff like that. And yeah, it's it's uh, it's a game that that kind of demands as much of the players, you know, as any other game I can think of. So hmm. that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, yeah it's rewarding. Though. Some people, I guess, enjoy that. Yeah, but then again, yeah, you know, punishing games that seems to be the thing that it's like, who wants to play a punishing game? Meanwhile, that's all we basically play. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Any of the roguelikes or roguelikes likes are, are like that. Yeah, so. like, I don't know what it is. Rogue Legacy, fucking love that game. Spelunky, fucking love that game. Like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'll get you playing Binding of Isaac sooner or later, Nelson. I've been watching some uh, gameplay or Twitch streams of it so far. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the items or how they stack. I would just be like, oh, look, new thing. Wee! Yeah, just, just yeah. play Link to the Past, the Zelda Link to the Past. There you go. Yeah, oh, throw that that would make me want to throw my got, computer out my window. Got Isaac. <laughs> I, I I already own it, so there we are. Yeah, there you go. I own it too, uh, but it's so frustrating. Maybe maybe we should make that our our uh, book club homework. <laughs> okay. Everybody play Binding of Isaac. Dan right. and I will basically report back with "fuck that game." Meanwhile, Brian will go into a 45-minute conversation about how all the different elements <laughs> and, and nuances of the game. I yeah? actually I actually recorded a video yesterday. Oh, you nice. did? Of, of a Binding of Isaac walk playthrough. I, I actually recorded three videos, but only one of them is really usable. So, <laughs> Welcome to I was the still life messing with my levels and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, yeah. You don't realize how much is involved in that kind of shit until you actually sit down and do it. I would actually like to see that. I would like to see your uh, quick look on that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's uh, not a quick look. It's like it's like fifty two minutes long. Whoa, <laughs> so. not a quick look. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. It's a full run. Yeah, and I didn't even beat it. So okay, all right. Yeah. Hmm. So what kind of beer are you drinking, Dan? Today's podcast brought to you by Sierra Nevada Torpedo Extra IPA. Are, are you, would you consider yourself a beer snob? Yeah. All right. I would. <laughs> Man, I you would love would. living in Vancouver just to pour a little salt in that wound. Well, I can tell you that the beer down here is uh, it's all unregulated, so there's lots of options. There's no there's no beer store, there's no LCBO, so it's great. It's it's actually really great. I would have to be say that American beer right now is better. Oh boy, than the Canadian beer. You guys are gonna pull my Canadian card, aren't you? For saying that, yeah, that's fighting words. More. Well, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Come it's, down it's, here. It's all subject it's to like taste. That you, it's like that scene in Canadian Bacon. <laughs> yeah. You know the one where he's saying all kinds of terrible shit about Canadians and then he <laughs> finally gets to And the bear sucks and everybody's like, what? Yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> the whole stadium stands up. Yeah, I remember that scene. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Well, the beer doesn't suck in Canada. It just sucks in Alberta. I think that's fair to say. <laughs> sure, we can go with that. Oh, but then dude. again, everything sucks in Alberta. Oh, oh. Hang on. Hang <laughs> on. Come on. Not everything sucks in Alberta. I was living there for a little for a little while, so I'm sorry. 
Okay, so what else did we play this week? I don't know. Dan, what did what you play this week? We were still on you. Oh, well, that's... I'm looking at your activity feed right now. I see you just bought Retro City <laughs> Rampage for 99 cents. That's a pretty cool little game. It's I fun. gotta say, it's, it's fun. fun. Yeah, it's an open world, um, little 8-bit kind of shoot 'em up. I know um, some people hated it because it's like, eh, it's too, it's too retro, and I hate the word retro, and it's all 8-bit. Yeah, they're just ripping off all of those styles. It's like, no, it's fun. It's yeah, funny. totally. It's got a lot of. It's got a lot of nods <laughs> to a, a lot of the old original, uh, like NES games and shit like that. Yeah, like Back to the Future sort hmm. of reminds me of. Um, it kind of reminds me of uh, what's that game? Uh, Ghostbusters for the Commodore sixty four. Oh dear God! <laughs> yeah, I, do you remember that game? That is that is yeah. wow. That's a deep cut. Um, but yeah, that's that's sort of but but with modern sort of pixel shading and whatnot, what have you. And so, really, really solid uh, mechanics and controls. So yeah, definitely. Uh, I like the auto targeting in that game. It's definitely a game for me uh, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I, I could jump in and play it. Um, yeah, and so that's pretty much. I mean, I, I play World of Warcraft from time to time. I dabble. Uh, that's I, again. I, I still keep my. I think I might have talked about this in my other podcast, but um, I keep an account going just because I like to be able to jump in and out when I want to. Um, yeah, it's fifteen a month. Why not? Yeah, and there's talk about it, it coming free to play. I don't think that's ever going to happen. No. I, no. As long as they can still charge for it, they'll charge for it. I don't... War, World go. of Warcraft will go free to play when World of Warcraft 2 comes out, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Warcraft <sense>. harder. Yeah. <laughs> Warcraft more harder. Um, I, I, Yeah, I think so. That's the only way that, that would happen. But um, I like it because, uh, you know, I, I, I still have family members that play. Mm. Um, so for us, it's like, it's like bonding time, which is... It's a strange new world, you guys. It is. Yeah. But, you know, any any opportunity to be social and, and whatnot, you know, mm-hmm. other people do that through, like, Facebook or other stupid methods. At least in World of Warcraft, you're having fun while doing it instead of poking people. Yeah, you're adventuring, you're, 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 you're PvPing if you want to. It's... Yeah. I... I for sure. Uh, so that's pretty much it. For, for for me, um, what about you guys? You guys been playing, Brian? Oh, uh, me. Um, let me see here. I'm just gonna dig up my list of games. See what I've been playing <laughs> this week. Um, when he has to dig up his list, I, you know it's serious. <laughs> yeah. I also played. Where is it here? I've been playing a lot of FTL lately. Um, still really enjoying that one. Um. What else have I played this week? Broforce. Yeah. Uh, did a couple of Spelunky dailies. Haven't been playing that one as much the last little while. Um, played a fair amount of Bi- Binding of Isaac yesterday because I was recording some stuff for that. And hopefully cool. that'll be up on the site in the next little while. Um, Dark Souls, as we talked about before. Mm-hmm. Playing a bit of that. Got two builds on the go right now. Trying to make a dex build and a strength build go. Actually, it's kind of a strength faith build. Actually, now that I think about it, it's kind of strength and faith. Um, picked up a couple of games this week. Uh, first one was Ring Runner: Flight of the Sages. Yeah, you were mentioning that. Mm. Yeah, it's it's kind of a top-down um, uh, space combat game. Um, from what I've been reading, it kind of opens up as you get later on in the game and turns into kind of an open open world kind of thing or open galaxy, I guess. Um, yeah, that one's that one's been a lot of fun. I've been playing with that. The controls are kind of like Asteroid. It's one of these rotate, rotate and thrust kind of <laughs> things, and yeah, it's it's cool. kind of cool. So it's kind not really like a twin stick shooter, too, then. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I've been playing a bit of that. I've only only played that one for a couple hours so far. It was super cheap on Steam. It was like two forty nine. So I thought, mm-hmm. what the hell? And I also picked up uh, Retro City Rampage today when it was on sale. Um, just because it was ninety nine cents, and yeah. you know, I could have I could have that or a candy bar, so whatever. <laughs> no, you couldn't even get a candy bar. Taxes. Yeah, it's true. They're a buck thirty nine now or something, aren't they? Yeah, you convinced me to get that, and I'm glad I did. That's a yeah. good purchase. That was fun. Yeah, played a little bit of that so far. Haven't haven't dived into it very much yet, but uh, yeah, it's it's good. It's got a really interesting retro aesthetic, and uh, the humor is is pretty pretty nonstop. It doesn't always hit, but you know, it's <laughs> when it does, <laughs> always, at least you have a literal out loud chuckle. 
Yeah. There's, yeah. There's, there's an, always another joke right around the corner. So, uh, <laughs> you know, even if one falls flat, you can, you can wait for the next one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, Spelunky, FTL, Ring Runners, Retro City Rampage, and Dark Souls. Um, I got a question about Dark Souls. Is there any, like, uh, what do you call that, uh, stats that, that are worthless at this time around? or are they all Resistance. Good? Okay. Resistance. Don't put any points into Resistance. Yeah. Um, Same as the first one, then. The, yeah, that's that's like the the first the first thing you should learn about creating a character in, in um, Dark Souls is the points into vitality and endurance are never wasted. Points into resistance are always wasted. Huh? <laughs> yeah, good 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 to know. Yeah, and uh, basically, don't take anything up over forty because there's okay. no point. Uh, it's all diminishing returns after that. Um, and you probably won't live yeah. that long anyway. Yeah, probably not. Well, well. So. Just basically, yeah, crank your decks or your sorry, your um, your vitality and your endurance up to up to forty, and then decide what you need for the weapons that you want to use. And it really comes down to finding a weapon whose move set suits you. Yeah. Experiment with every weapon you pick up, see what it does, and if you're comfortable with the weapon, then focus on that and pump up the stats that are important for the scaling on that weapon. Hmm. Oh, and always take pyromancy because it it doesn't matter what your stats are; you can do pyromancy no matter what. It's just, uh, just a, uh, what is that, like a, uh, a range? It's all fires. Fire and poison spells, mainly. Okay. Sounds sexy. There's, there's, three, there's three schools of magic. There's pyromancy, there's miracles, and there's sorcery. Okay? Pyromancy has no stat dependencies at all. So you, anybody can do pyro, pyromancy. Mm-hmm. Um, sorcery is all based on intelligence and uh, attunement. Attunement determines how many spells you get. Intelligence determines how much damage you do with those spells. And intelligence also determines what spells you can learn. Um, miracles are based on faith, and also attunement allows you to memorize more miracles. So if you want to play, if you want to play like a cleric healer type of guy, you go with faith. If you want to be a sorcerer, you go with intelligence. And uh, if you want to be a pyromancer, you can put your points into whatever the hell you want. Yeah, I figured I'd be doing a paladin type build, so... Yeah, that's a strength faith build, mm-hmm. and there's there's a couple of weapons fairly early in the game that you can pick up that are really good for that kind of build. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, no worries. Nelson. Oh, uh, eh. um, Lift Trousers. Spent a little bit of time in that. Uh, I don't know. That one's fun to stream on Twitch whenever I'm really really bored. Mm-hmm. But Lift Trousers, I don't know. That's that's kind of what I call a twenty minute game. Um. Because once you play it any longer than 20 minutes, you start to get really bored. <laughs> um, Broforce, I like to stream that one too, so I've been playing a bunch of that. Um, I, I really hope that they come out with the full release soon and get some of the bro-op working. Because uh, Brian and I tried to do a little little bro-op session in that game, and it yeah, just would not out. connect. It was oh. a miserable fail nightmare. So oh, okay. I kind of took the fun out of... Out of or what could have been potential fun, you know, just shot it right down. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I've finished that game in its current iteration probably a good over 20 times now. Uh, I tried it on hard. Wow. <laughs> Vastly different on hard. Uh, like a good hard? Like a good way or? Uh, punishing. Yeah, okay. But, I mean, at the same time, it's because I've finished it so many times on normal. Uh, on hard, it's now, it's the same game, but just turned up to 11. Right. Expect to die way more. And yeah, you know, um, I, I'm, I, I had to turn it off of hard and back to normal because it got to the point where I started getting mad. Okay. Cause it's like, that's never a good thing. No, it's like, oh, but I finished it so many times and now why am I so bad? No. And so is it cheating? Like to win? Is that what's happening or? No, it just ma- the uh, enemies become more aware, and okay. normally when they when they spot you, uh, they'll fire off like one bullet every <clears throat> x seconds. But once they spot you on hard mode, they pretty much don't stop firing. Okay, it's like it's bang, bang, oh, bang, bang, bang. oh, there's a good girl. Yes, she is. Official dog of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Official doorbell of the podcast. That too. Every time somebody comes to the door, she just flips the fuck out. <laughs> it's staying in. It's not going to <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, Spelunky. Um, wow, Spelunky. 
Yeah. I started out playing that game and hating every minute of it. But um, let's see. Brian was always always talking about it, and it seemed really interesting. And then I started watching uh, Will Smith from Tested uh, yeah. Tested dot com playing it on on his Twitch stream. I'm like, you know, this doesn't look too bad, and it's, it looks <laughs> like it looks like it could be fun. So I, yeah. I started devoting a little bit more effort into it. Like I, I sunk in about 15, <laughs> 15 hours in total. Uh, and I ended up beating it while I was uh, streaming it on Twitch. And Brian happened to be there to cheer me on. And nice. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was awesome. And cool. because I only finished one L or one. The game has a few or a couple of different endings. I finished the the slightly easier ending. Next up is to f- try and finish it on the harder ending. Uh, once I do that, then I can pretty much just uh, put it to bed for a little while. Not uninstall it, but just kind of try something else until until they come up with an <laughs> add-on pack or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah if they do some DLC, holy fuck! <laughs> Goodbye, life. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. That's basically it. I mean, uh, my my gaming. With, over the last week, week and a half has been fairly Spartan. It's it's been a bit of a lull, I would have to say. Um, like I've been May playing has, more games. Hasn't been much coming out. May is going to be a huge month for for yeah. game announcements and stuff. We can talk about that a little bit later. What's mm-hmm. coming up? Do we want to talk about news? I have no yeah, idea what's news. going on. So yeah, uh, I just wanted to first say like if you are in the United States, uh, Target and Walmart have a two for one game deal right now. Uh, so get on that. Like what? buy one game, get one for free. No shit. So, yeah. So like all those in, uh, uh, Nintendo games that are like fifty nine dollars and they'll never go down in price. Yeah, you can get it for free now. So get on that. That. Interesting. That's awesome, actually. Do you think... I don't know if they're... Target in Canada has been... Might have something like that. I don't know. Um, mm, probably not. No? <laughs> they're pretty weak up here. That sucks. Yeah. That's too bad, because Target down here is is the shit. They haven't established their stranglehold yet. They definitely should, because deals like that will will definitely, um, I think, bring them up in status. But, uh, well, that'll also sell some uh, some Wii games. Or Wii yeah. games. So. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So, which ones I, did you buy? <laughs> I picked up. Uh, well, I'm gonna pick up tomorrow, which is I think the last day of the sale. Uh, yeah, I want to pick up uh, Pikmin three and uh, probably the Wonderful One Hundred One. So, the Wonderful One Hundred One. Two good choices. Yeah, never heard it's of it. Very difficult, difficult games, but very fun. Very, uh, very cool games. Uh, there's that theme again. Difficult games. Mm-hmm. Difficult, challenging games, but uh, yeah, that's what I want to play. Uh, okay, other news: Dark Age of Camelot. Did you, what did you guys? Did you guys ever play that game? Dark Age of Camelot. Uh, yeah, with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I so, knew of the game, and usually anybody talking to me about it, I was like, "Wow, you're such a nerd." Well, this was what? this was before I started <laughs> playing World of Warcraft. Obviously, but, uh, guess what? It's on the Steam Greenlight program. Jesus. Seriously? Yeah, what fucking year is this, right? <laughs> Holy crap. I know. So they are still patching and balancing that game, uh, which I guess That's makes sense. It, because they closed down Warhammer Online, they have a lot of people that still need jobs, I suppose. Um, I actually logged into Dark Age of Camelot two years ago uh, for this podcast, and it was actually surprisingly active. Wow. But huh. yeah, the latest patch completely redesigns the PvP Frontier system. Um, but uh, word on the street is it's still a Zerg best. So, how about that? Yeah, there yeah. it is. Yeah, Dark Age of Camelot. I know. Steam Greenlight. And also, That's Ultima great. Online is also on Steam Greenlight. Huh. Mm-hmm. So, does this mean they're moving their multiplayer over to to Steamworks, or? Uh, that would make sense, but no, they haven't actually uh, announced anything like that. So, I think it's still pay to play. Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, but that would make sense. I would, I would definitely support that. Would I play it? Mm. Mm. I don't know. I don't think so. It's kind of a blast from the past. I, it looks like it's gotten some graphical overhauls over the last little while. It's, yeah. it's a little better than I remember it. Yeah, I, I like the mechanics of that game. I did at the time. It was uh, it was de- definitely revolutionary. It was two years after EverQuest was released. So. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, a bunch of us jumped over to that game. Yeah, for a little while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I went back to Q. I'm thinking they're um, banking on that anybody that had played it in the past and had fond memories of it will probably try and pick up again just to s- yeah. relive those fond memories and at the same time, you know, spend money. So Yeah. I would like it if if like vanilla EverQuest was to move over to Greenlight Steam, but for I what EverQuest one is on Steam, isn't it? It is, but like the latest like Butcher Oh, you mean like old school EverQuest? Yeah, yeah. Uh but what I understand, um Sony does not does not keep old patches. That's not how they work. They, crazy. Yeah, they don't keep old versions. They delete it all. It's crazy. What? Yeah, yeah. That was from an insider who worked at Sony. He said that there's no way they could ever um, go back to a totally vanilla EverQuest because they just don't have that capability. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's been what 15 years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I suppose that's to be expected, but you would think they would curate stuff like that. You would think, yeah, you would think. Uh, but the the, the new uh, EverQuest MMO coming out with with um, destroyable uh, pixels. What do they call it? Voxels. <laughs> Voxels is right. the word of two, 2014. So that's ever gonna, Minecraft. Right. That's that's, ex- <laughs> <laughs> that's just it. Yeah. So that's going to be coming out soon. Uh, okay, other news. Uh, Hitman Go. Oh, yeah. Extremely good reviews. Uh, it's an isometric tactical game with stripped-down look. It's like XCOM, but Hitman. Yeah, like Final Fantasy Tactics, but Hitman. <laughs> what platforms is that on? iOS, Android. Uh, I don't think there's... But there it might be coming up for PC, uh, but it hasn't been released yet. It looks really cool. I, I'd suggest go... Taking some uh, YouTube uh, videos of it. Is that like Hitman, Silent Assassin, Hitman, or? Um, I don't know. know, That's the the Hitman from the Hitman series. That Hitman. Hitman. Agent Agent Forty Seven Seven. It is by Square Enix. So it It looks like a little like uh, uh, like a little doll, like a little paper doll that kind of moves around and. On rails, and you move it into huh. certain areas. It's like uh, um, turn-based. So, right. yeah, cool. looks pretty cool. Um, what else we got? Uh, World of Darkness, which is a White Wolf joint. You might have uh, played Vampire: The Masquerade and all those. Games. Yeah, before the LARPers ruined it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vampire Simulator. Well, it was being developed by CCP Games, which is the makers of Eve Online. And it's been canceled. Oh. That game's been in development since 2008. And uh, over 70 people have been working on it day-to-day, developing tools and the technology. But now they're going to concentrate on the EVE Online universe. So there's an MMO news for you guys. Uh, This is being canceled. Oh. Well, that sucks. Well, that's all the news I've got. Yeah. I don't know. MMOs are dead. A little bit. (laughs) <laughs> I had a I had an interesting piece about the uh, uh, from the BBC that I wanted to talk about. Um, hmm. They did a they they're quoting a study that was done that links video game violence to feelings of frustration rather than violent content. Huh. And they carried out a range of tests, including making a, a nonviolent version of Half Life Two, with uh, which was modified to have counterintuitive and frustrating controls. Uh, they said this led to feelings of incompetence and produced more aggressive reactions than anything they tested with violent uh, violent content in it. So this just in: if you're mad at video games, it's because you suck at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blame it on controller lag. That's right. <laughs> Um, they said it. They, they said it was uh, encouraging to read a study that took a more nuanced approach to the link between video games and aggression than some previous research. Um, and basically, I, I think this is kind of what the way that we're seeing game development being pushed. I mean, a lot of games, you know, a, a lot of games are, are just kind of if you play them long enough, you win, right? Like if you just keep at it for for a long enough time. You're 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 gonna you're gonna triumph over the game. Yeah. I think I think the kind of games that that we've been talking about earlier in the podcast, things like Spelunky and Dark Souls and stuff like that, um, they kind of go counter to that. It's it's a game that you have to actually make an effort to overcome, right? Yeah. Rather than just train yourself. Yeah, like uh, muscle memory kind of yep. idea. Definitely. Yeah. Right. Right. 
So I mean that's that's kind of uh, I thought that was kind of interesting um, that that it, it may be like video games there may be a link between video games and aggression but it doesn't have anything to do with what you're experiencing it has more to do with how well the game sort of lets you feel like you've mastered it fair enough yeah makes sense to me yeah yeah I remember those games for the Game Boy uh, Final Fantasy games are so so difficult. Um, but they were not turn-based. They were Twitch-based. And uh, as a kid, you know, you had to train yourself. You had to be good at it. If I was mm-hmm. to go back to that game now, I'd probably just throw it out the door. Like, if there's no way. <laughs> you would be amazed, man. Muscle memory is a, th- yeah. is, is a crazy thing. Like, I, yeah. you pick yeah. up games from, from the way back when, and you can just – it's like you were playing it yesterday. Like uh, uh, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Cool. That's a that's a cool, cool article there, Brian. Thanks. Yeah, and you even put it up on the Google Plus page. I did. <laughs> Google Plus. All right. So we should we talk about our anybody? Okay. Does anybody have else any any news or should we talk about? Uh, our... I got I got one piece of news. Uh, sure. Pan Arcade Expo. Mm-hmm. You know how they have PAX East, PAX Prime, PAX Australia. Well, guess yeah. what? PAX South. What? Huh. Starting in 2015, PAX will be, uh, Pan Arcade Expo will be slated to debut in San Antonio, Texas, running oh, from January that. 3rd yeah. to January 25th. <laughs> wow. Those guys are just money machines. Yeah. Well, they've well, really stumbled on something there, haven't they? What, mm-hmm. was the, what was the guy's name? Eric Koo or whatever? Robert Koo? Uh, yeah. Robert Koo. There we go. Yeah, that, that guy knows how to fucking market the shit out of things. Yeah, yeah. Everybody needs a Robert Koo. Yeah, yeah. I need one to make me rich. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only other thing I uh, want to wanna announce our FTL Steam Key, Faster Than Light Steam Key giveaway winner raffle dude person. Right, yes. You got the winner? Uh, well, let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six entries. Uh, mm-hmm. Confirm that they all are still following. So they are... They are all eligible. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm just sitting here on random.org. Okay. Minimum number one, maximum number six. And uh, if I hit that generate button, that'll let me know which... You could just roll a dice. Yeah. I tried looking for my D6 <laughs> and, and I couldn't find one, so... Who doesn't have a D6? I know. <laughs> They're packed away, man. They're packed away, so that's fine. Uh, so once I click that generate button, you know, drum roll, please. All right, generate. Let's do this. What are we waiting for? The number is four. So four let's see. is tab one, four. two, three, four. That would be Patrick or at Sneery Rumble. Sneery nice. Rumble is Great the winner of Rumble. Faster Than Light. Nice. Congratulations, Sneery Rumble. Right, Sneery Rumble Ninja, please. So uh, yeah, I'll be reaching out, uh, or one of us will be reaching out on the Twitters within a DM, just slamming the key in your in your direct message box and enjoy it yeah winner of the thing thanks for following by the way that's awesome and stay tuned because we'll have more giveaways in the future yeah 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 for sure we've got them keys gotta give them away my box is bursting with with keys your box is (laughs) bursting my my steam box is bursting. i don't know what that means all righty then so yeah what was the what was the topic of the day um the topic of the day is games we are looking forward to this year. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's year two. Um, well, I guess I should begin. There's actually a huge uh, glut of games coming out in May. And oh, so yeah. th- those games, for me, I've, uh, I've got three games that I'm really looking forward to. Mario Kart 8 and Tropical 5, and I'll talk about the third one in a little bit. So Tropical 5 for the first time, introduces multiplayer up to four people on one island, which is kind of cool. So what, um, you need help to oppress citizens of a banana republic now? Yeah, you do. <laughs> well, you, you got you to gotta fight for your, your land on a, on a tiny little island, so that's kind of cool. Right. Um, so it actually goes through different eras, like uh, World War II, Cold War, and post-Cold War. Um, yeah, and I, I've always liked Tropico, and it seems to be like one of those games that probably wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Steam. And uh, mm-hmm. 
By that I mean Steam lets game developers experiment uh, and, and, and uh, develop it, uh, add-ons to their existing game engine and still be profitable. So right. I, I really like Tropico. It's, uh, it's one of those things where you can, again, you can just jump in and play, add to your little world and, and move on. So, so Dan... Mm-hmm. Tropico is a game that I've had on my wish list for a really long time. It's one of those games that I've kind of circled for a very long time. Do you think Tropico 4 is a good place to kind of get in on this, or should I wait for 5? I would say Tropico 4 is a good place because it, it, it's hit that certain price point. I think it's at 19 I think it's like 5 bucks today or something like that. Oh, there you go. Let me have a look. I seem to remember there being a deal on it. I could be wrong, though. Maybe yeah. that was yesterday. I like I like it a lot. Uh, if you like those sort of god games, developing top down sort of, it's definitely one of the best ones out there, for sure. Right? Yeah, it's on uh, the tro- Steam special edition of Tropico Four is on for two ninety nine right now. Oh, dude, you got to get on that. Huh? They got a collector's bundle for five ninety nine that includes all the DLC too. Yeah, the DLC. Yeah, I probably would pass. It doesn't really right? add a whole lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you probably. I mean, to get the core game for two ninety nine, that's that's essential, right? And you get the gist of everything. You don't. Really, I mean, I have the whole collector's edition. I don't really need it. I didn't need it at all. So okay. Um. Yeah. Tropical but five. It's, it's only like three bucks more though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you can get it. The other thing too is uh, okay. The other game I'm looking forward to is Mario Kart eight. Yeah, I hear that's yeah. going to be a good one. So Wii U is a walled garden uh, that is in desperate need for a few plants. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Mario Kart, being a first-party title, brings the concept of, um, you know, like having people come over and play, play games, have a few beers, have some fun. At least that's what it means to me. So, Which is what the mm-hmm. Wii, the original Wii, has excelled at. Um, yeah. Even the old Nintendo, all the Nintendo consoles were very, you know, come out, come over, hang out, and play some game friendly. So, yeah, and you know, have the spiky shell. I mean, the, all that stuff is, is something that's really into our gaming conscious. Making and, friends, one blue shell at a time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cool. And nice thing about Mario Kart Eight is it's going to be online as well, so you can you can play against your friends online, which is cool. I'm, I'm interested to see how they're going to do that. Now, is online multiplayer a new thing for that? No. Uh, Mario Kart 7 for the 3DS, you could play people online. Forgive my ignorance here, but I'm not a Nintendo guy. Okay. I skipped uh, <laughs> Mario Kart 7, so... Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know about Mario Kart 7, so... Well, 3DS version, yeah, you can play against people online, so I would assume it would okay. be pretty much the same for uh, for the Wii U. Yeah. Probably better. It looks really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, this time around, you could play the Koopa Kids from Mario Kart... Or Super Mario 3... Oh, God. <laughs> eh, I mean, yeah, I guess that's cool. Uh, it's better than any Luigi derivatives, though. Oh, God. Yeah. That was the worst. 2014, uh, so, year, year of Luigi, part two. Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> the Luigi-ing. Almost brought down the whole company. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that... <laughs> Luigi, you're fucking fired. Yeah. <laughs> Sad Luigi. Oh, jeez. Poor guy. I know, right? So, well. Uh, so that game comes out on May 28th, so looking forward to that one. Okay, so the third game uh, is Disney Infinity 2. No judgment. No judgment. <laughs> oh, fuck that. I'm judging him. <laughs> Some <right>. judgment. <laughs> Some judgment implied. Silent <laughs> silent judgment. Silent judgment. Yeah, okay. All right. I pile it on. Um, but the fact that it's including Mar- Marvel characters now, it might seal a deal. Uh, it's an open world uh, game. <laughs> and being what's given, next? Star Wars characters? I mean, come on. That'll be 3.0. Or are they already in there? No. no. You can oh, get a lightsaber. You can get it, a just, lightsaber. it just makes me sad how much of the how much of the intellectual intellectual property Disney is coming to own these days. It's really quite frightening. It is a little bit scary. Uh, the fact that, absorb you know, all the things. It's fine. It's right yeah. in childhood. It hurts. Um... And then we'll be able to belly up to our very own entertainment nipple and eat our pre-digested content from our Disney overlords. Benevolent wow. may they always be. Pre- that painted one hell of a picture there, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Shitting dick awesome. nipples. Ugh. <laughs> um, but the I don't thing- mean to sound jaded or anything. No, no. Let's <laughs> carry on. Disney, Disney Infinity 2. Well, tell, me, tell me why I want that, Dan. 
Uh, well, it's an open world game. Uh huh. So are they, they're going to address some of the issues that led to the lackluster creative uh, tools. So, the, for example, you can only play the, the toy boxes. So, like, if there's, like, a Toy Story 2 toy box, you can only play Toy Story 2 characters in that toy box, which sucked. So you couldn't put, like, Mike, you know, the, the Monsters, Inc. guy, Mike Wazowski. Mike Wazowski. Yeah, in the toy, in the toy Story 2. <laughs> um, so they're gonna they're gonna change that around. So good. That's that's cool. Uh, again, it's it's for kids, so there's really no challenge to it. Um, Maybe that's why you like it. Hey oh, hey oh. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> not sorry. That's cool. I don't know. I'm I'm a Disney fan. I'm also you know I like open world fan stuff. I mean, appeals to me. Uh, but that's, but that's that's fine, Dan. You don't have to justify it to us. That's okay. <laughs> I can tell from your tone, like you're. you're to <laughs> to Sorry. Tingling. I woke up. I woke up with a case of snarkalepsy this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I I knew this wasn't a good addition, but there you it is. You, you had to know you'd get some stick for it. That's cool. I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm throwing it out there. That's okay. Yeah. I I, I applaud your bravery. Thanks. I don't think I would. I don't think I would have had the guts to put something like that on here. <laughs> I drink my beer and you guys. Are, <laughs> are you allowed to have beer, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop now. It's okay. It's all good. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'm done. I'm good. Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Disney Infinity Two. Okay. So yeah. those were your selections. That's, that's for... coming out in August. So those are the games I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> all right who's next all right go for it. you want me to go next sure. i can go next and then dan can make snarky comments about the games that i picked mm-hmm. uh let's see here what have i got up first uh all right watch dogs yep um you know fuck the haters i still think this game is going to be worth playing um Yes, they have tried to scale things back a little bit from their early concepts, but uh, I still think it's going to be an impressive game. I love me a, a modern open world type of game, and uh, it looks interesting. I'm, I'm definitely going to give that one a look. Yeah. Um, so, just the, the planet. I'm yep, going to yep. I'll have to jump Pack. into your game and, and you know, In, fuck shit up. Information just wants to be free, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like uh, what that game promises. I like the yeah. open worldness of it and and, yeah, uh, it looks interesting. Jump in, jump out, kind of multiplayer. That looks cool. Exactly. Yeah, it does. It looks pretty interesting. So um, that's the first one that I'm looking forward to. I think that one comes out what May 25th. I want to say uh, earlier than that. Is it? So I like, thought it was uh, Tuesday. Second week of May or something. First or second week of May. Right. Okay. Soon. Very soon. Um, okay. Very soon. Yeah, it should be out shortly. So I think that's going to kick off our kind of the, the summer gaming, the second quarter. That's going to be a second quarter kind of uh, big title. So, sure. should be interesting. Um, the next one I'm looking forward to is uh, Super Giant's next game. Uh, you may remember Super Giant, the guys who did Bastion. Yep. Uh, they oh. have a sci fi themed action RPG coming out called Transistor. That's on uh, my list. Which looks really impressive. Uh, it's it's the same kind of three quarter overhead perspective that Bastion had, but uh, and it was built. I think it was, if I remember right, it was built using the same engine, but it's a different kind of game. It's almost a turn based role playing game type of thing. Sci fi themed um, action RPG. Yep, yep. So uh, that one looks really cool. Uh, the trailers are out there. That one is coming out on May the twentieth. Uh, so that one's imminent as well. Oh, really? That's uh, soon, huh? Yeah, yeah, should oh. be out fairly shortly. I'm gonna be broken, May. <laughs> that looks like uh, it suffers from giant sword anime. <laughs> anime giant sword problem. Yeah, there. with the gun sword. Does it have a yeah. gun in the sword? No, I, I think that actually is like a, some kind of a USB key or something like that. <laughs> I can't remember. It, it, it's there's there's some lore behind that one, I think. But uh, um, yeah, it's it's great. There's some videos up on Giant Bomb where they they sat down and played a little bit of it, and uh, it looks really really cool. It and uh, yeah, yeah. Quite frankly, after after Bastion, these guys have earned a lot of goodwill from me because uh, I love Bastion. I thought that was a fantastic game. Yeah, um, that was amazing, especially the voiceover and what they had yeah. to do to get that voiceover in the uh, yeah. in the story of uh, Bastion. If you can yeah. check out the uh, documentary on that, is is really impressive. 
Yeah, yeah. It was it was a development cycle that was actually really transparent. They had the the giant bomb guys there from start to finish, just kind of chronicling the whole the whole affair. Um, but yeah, those guys, you know, they're basically just enthusiasts who went on to make games, and they're they're doing a good job of it so far. And I'm looking forward to what they have next. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, next one for me is Dark Souls Two. Uh, yeah. which is coming out I think that's this week isn't it yeah it's coming this week Holy shit. Uh, looking forward to that one yeah it's coming out next Friday which is weird it's a Japanese game though so they tend to release their games on Friday for some reason uh, where is it here just in time for the weekend they do it because of uh, you know the Final Fantasy problems right. of kids not showing up well that was school. the yeah that was the <laughs> Nintendo one they started releasing their games on Sundays so that nobody would miss work or school to, to play them yeah um, yeah, that's coming out on the 25th of April, which is when that's five days. Yeah, man. that's Friday. That's a Friday. Wow. So that's day yeah. eight for you. Um, I don't know. I mean, I held off on the, the PS3 version. So, cause I wanted to play it on PC. Uh, I'm, I don't know. I've, I've got a lot of that I'm playing right now, so I'll see. Maybe. I'll, I'll give it a tentative maybe at this point, but it's definitely one that I'm looking forward to playing. Uh, so yeah, Dark Souls, but more of it. Um, <laughs> bigger world, more more interesting PvP, and supposedly a much better PC port than uh, the last one. So. Uh, a fleshed out game, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, more fleshed. Yeah. yeah so, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. I can't wait to get my hands on it, because uh, I've been trying to... St- <laughs> As spoiler free, there's been a lot of Dark Souls 2 stuff floating around, and I've been trying to stay away from it as much as possible. Mm-hmm. But uh, I want to go into that one as fresh as possible. But I've been a sucker for the Souls games ever since Demon Souls. So yeah. <laughs> and let's see here. Last but not least, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. Whoa! I had no idea that was a, a new Dragon Age coming out. Yeah, yeah, and it looks it looks pretty amazing too. Um, hmm. Dragon Age, the first one was one of my favorite role-playing games of all time. Um, probably the last of the true sort of Bioware titles that came yeah. out, came out around the same time as Mass Effect 2. And they've had some missteps since then. Let's, let's put it gently. <laughs> um, Dragon Age 2 was, was not great. And uh, Mass Effect 3, I thought, I thought it was a fitting cap to the story, but I just, I didn't, it didn't really resonate with me like Mass Effect 2 did. Uh, this one looks like they've taken a lot of the criticisms that were leveled against Dra- Dragon Age 2 to heart, and uh, they're delivering a, a, a much more traditional Western RPG kind of game with this one. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. I don't know if they've actually said anything about a release date for that one. I'm just looking online right now. But it's supposed to be coming out this... Uh, it's supposed to be coming out this... Um, Mm, this year 2014 i don't think they've announced yeah. the actual date yet no they usually so, at least announce like the quarter of the season yeah it just says this autumn so yeah no no uh no actual hard release date yet but uh um yeah but, yeah I, sounds I, like I, september you know what I, I was thinking about dragon age the other day and just those moments where you're just you're on your way to a quest or or an adventure and just a little interactions between your your party you know that i like those moments where the little uh, conversations come up as you're walking through a, a cave it's just yeah like, and just the, I, I love those little those little tidbits where you, you learn a little bit about character interactions and if you have if you mix up your character party you get different reactions I, I, so those are the little moments i i loved about dragon age and bioware in particular those little yeah yeah, they're really good at world building. Like they, yeah. they put together fully, fully realized worlds, and um, that's what I'm looking forward to in 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 uh, Mass Effect Inquisition, or yeah. not? Sorry, Dragon Age Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, what am I saying? But yeah, no, it it looks like it's going to be a a really impressive role playing game, and and at this point, I'm you know I know I want it, but I I'm kind of keeping myself as unspoiled as possible on Dragon Age Inquisition. I haven't been watching a lot of the videos or anything like that. Um, but it's definitely on my on my list for this year. And now on mine. Um, do you guys know that there's a Star Wars game that they're developing right now? And rumor sure has it that it's going to be in the same sort of style as Knights of the Old Republic. So, huh. I heard that they were actually doing a Knights of the Old Republic 3. Oh, dude. 
that was part of the um, when Lucas Arts or when Lucas Arts folded. Um, mm-hmm. We're getting we're get, we're definitely getting uh, a Battlefront three. Yeah, that's that's coming for sure. Um, what were the other ones? There was a couple other ones as well. I think they were talking about a new X Wing, a new X Wing game. Hmm. Oh, was right. I, was I yeah. dreaming about that? No, um, she happened. That was on Reddit. Uh, right. A couple weeks ago. And I think there was some there was some talk that they were going to do an actual single player RPG, Knights of the Old Republic three. Yeah. So I think that's happening. Yeah. It's about time. About time. You know, there's been demand for it. Yep. So Nelson. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> do you try have, to keep up you have 15 games yeah you, you told me before the show that you have 15 i've got a lot of games that make me tingle in the pant area uh uh-huh. for this year <laughs> That's um kind of gross but go on no not gross at all um brian already mentioned a couple of them watchdogs obviously um that one i'm not gonna do day and date but it's on my on my radar. Um, I'll probably just kind of wait a week or two, see if it's shit. Um, you know the general consensus. Yeah. And if it's not shit, I will give them my money. I, it's a UB game, so it's gonna be good. But I'm still a little hesitant about it. Um, Transistor because Bastion was awesome, and Transistor looks really good. Like that whole isometric gameplay. Uh, I bet it's just gonna be as brilliant as um bastion so yeah that's that's on me on me list um and running through the rest will be hack and slash it's a um, game by double fine it's a puzzle adventure game about hacking and reverse engineering hmm. Hmm. yeah i yeah. like double fine like everything that they do is uh, really great so. there's yeah double fine shows up a few times on my list um actually some of the a lot of the smaller studios are showing showing up on my uh game want list this year so uh last life is endorsed by double fine uh double fine actually has kind of like a um a sponsorship program Mm -hmm. uh for smaller studios or just indie individuals who want to release a game um double fine will endorse it uh so last life looks really good it's an episodic sci-fi adventure game uh where you're conducting a murder investigation about your own or a murder investigation of your own death Hmm. i would strongly recommend going out and watching the trailers for that uh, mm-hmm. because it just looks really fucking good. Um, also, another one that I'm probably going to give end up getting uh, this year once it drops, if it drops, should drop, uh, Borderlands, the pre-sequel. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's not done by the, the original uh, team that did Borderlands. Instead, it's going to be done by 2K Games Australia. Cool, cool. Um, you know they're they're kind of the parent of the folks who did the original Borderlands, but uh, yeah. So it's set between the the end of the first Borderlands and the begin before Borderlands Two. And one of the reasons I want to want to pick it up is because <clears throat> you get to play as Claptrap. <laughs> what I, I want to be shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's going to be good. I think so. Uh, I'll be curious to see what it's like, and I, I like the original Borderlands. Borderlands Two was fun, so I'll give them my money. Even though it's a slightly different studio, I'm sure it's going to be the same quality production as before. So, yeah, yeah, Borderlands the pre sequel. Uh, let's see what else is next. Hotline Miami Two. Mm-hmm. I've become a huge Devolver Digital fanboy. Pretty much everything on their lists, uh, I will just throw money at my screen to get. Um, you know, it's just obviously a sequel to Hotline Miami. Uh, more of the same, but in this case, it's a good thing. Hotline Miami was very solid, very uh, you know mechanically sound. It was hard as hell, but yeah. enjoyable. So Hotline Miami 2, wrong number, I think they call it. Uh, yep. Yeah. Murder puzzle game. Yep. <laughs> Murder puzzle game. Yeah, so that, that'll be on my list. I'm not sure if I'll pick it up you know damn date again most of the stuff i'm I'm kind of more uh wait and see sort of dude but that's fine uh what was next uh chasm it's uh by discord or discord games it's a 2d action rpg platformer with hack and slash dungeon crawler and metroidvania style elements <laughs> that's a mouthful but you know <laughs> I, I watched the trailer i saw some some gameplay from it it looks really pretty I, I'm more of a sucker for very simple, simple design games. Um, it's funny how I've mentioned RPGs a couple times in in 
the list so far because normally hmm. I'm not an RPG dude, but uh, you know I'm getting older. My my tastes are evolving, <laughs> refining, you might say. Indeed, yes, quite. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, what else? Uh, Always, sometimes monsters. That's by Vagabond Dog. You know, another joint by Devolver Digital. Uh, modern time RPG. Uh, where you set out on a journey through the human experience as you overcome the heartbreak and hardships of lost love by making choices that will affect your life and the lives of those around you. Wow. Another Deep. RPG, but it's set in, you know, like kind of current day, modern day time. So it that one's kind of a maybe for me. Um, there are elements of the game where I saw that looked really good, and then there are elements where I'm like, I'm not so sure about that. So that one's a maybe, but I'm... I'm curious to see what it what it pans out as. Uh, yeah. Then there's Broforce, the the final release. Um, I hope they add like more cutscenes, more fun bosses to kill, just a little bit more depth to the game, more levels. The game itself is great, um, but yeah, the the final version will probably be even more better, gooder. <laughs> <laughs> lots of lots of indie games on there. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, That's cool. Then there's Hyperlight Drifter. Uh, that one's by Heart Machine. It's a this one's a mouthful. 2D action role playing game fashioned after the Legend of Zelda: a Link to the Past, styled similar to Super Brothers: Sword and Sorcery. Uh, you as the player, you control the Drifter. Um, that's a character that has access to technology that has long been forgotten by the inhabitants of the game's world, but is forced to search through the world and the ruins of civilization, where before to find a cure. For for an illness that he carries. Uh, it's kind of themed off Castle in the Sky or Nausicaa. Um, it looks really good. <laughs> yeah. Again, I'm, I'm probably going to post links to like all the trailer, or yeah, to most of the trailers for everything I've mentioned on my list. Uh, just because once you see the trailers, you'll probably, you know, pop a semi at least. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, well... You guys, you guys ever remember playing Gauntlet as kids? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's getting a reboot by Arrowhead Games. Now, okay, Warner Brothers Interactive. It, it did get a reboot, and uh, it didn't uh, didn't do very well. Now, now, from what I understand, this might be a re reboot. Then maybe uh, they they because they they changed a lot of the stuff. So like the the Amazon chick. She was no longer a ranged girl. Like she was no longer ranged. She she could only hack and slash. She couldn't uh, fire arrows. Now, so so they changed a lot of the stuff that, and people were complaining. So it, know, maybe it is re- reboot. But. Based on what I've seen, it looks like they've stuck true to the original, but okay. made it way cooler. <laughs> Okay. Like, you know, remember when playing World of Warcraft in the beginning, you know, the, the spell effects and stuff like that seem really bland and boring. And then World of Warcraft now, when you're casting spells, it looks all pretty and I, I kind of can draw paradigms to that um, or parallels to that where mm-hmm. the original Gauntlet, it was really solid, really fun, but kind of dull to look at. Yeah. The new Gauntlet reboot or re-reboot looks lot, like lots of fun and it's really pretty. And they've they've stayed true to the the original gameplay. So, but yeah, cool. Gauntlet. That's that's an oldie but a goodie. Um, getting pretty close to the end of the list. I'll throw this one in. Batman: Arkham Knight. I can't believe neither of you guys mentioned it. <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to that one. I yeah. I don't know. It's just after after Origins. You know. Yeah. Order is cooled somewhat. <laughs> yeah, they have to win me back. <clears throat> but you get the Batmobile, man. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I the guess. Batmobile. I don't know. That's probably going to be the one thing in that game that annoys me. But yeah, Arkham Knight. That's not going to be in day and date either for me. Um, but I will most likely pick it up sometime this year. Uh, Gods will be watching. That one's mm-hmm. by Deconstruct Team, another Devolver Digital one. Um, I mentioned it before. It's like where you're isolated in a, kind of a single stage with a few possible actions, but you got to have to endure 40 days of survival until Sergeant Burden's crew can be rescued. Uh, and the, the challenge is basically to kind of stay alive and the decisions you have to make along the way uh, kind of shape how it goes. So I, don't know, I, I think I've linked that one on the Google Plus page once or more than once, but uh, it looks good. 
looks good. And it'll probably be really cheap, like 10, 15 bucks, which is seems to be my happy price point. Yeah. But yeah. Uh then there's Below by Capybara Games or Cape Cappy Games. It sort of reminds me of Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery in a way, the the art style, but it's it's yeah. basically a, a procedurally generated dungeon crawler. So the overworld that you end up on is different every time, but also the same with the dungeons. But uh, yeah, if you look at or watch some, um, the tr- even the trailer on that made me want it. So, but a lot of the games I listed, I'm not sure if they're all specifically available for PC. Um, like I think it was either Below or Hyperlight Drifter is I think a PS4 only game, or maybe it was Chasm. I don't remember. Uh, and then lastly, Super Time Force by Cappy Games again. Um, side-scrolling shooter with a, a time rewind. I'm doing air quotes that you can't see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> feature similar to Braid um, with all the guns and explosions and mayhem that you could ever dream of. I've seen so many trailers and, and like sneak previews of that game over the, over the many, many, many months. And I want the game already. Just make it so I can throw money into my computer and out spits a game. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that was my very in-depth, detailed list of the games. Like, there's a lot of shit I want to buy this year, and I'm going to be probably kind of poor. Yeah, there's a lot of games there. There's yeah. a lot of cool games there, and I like the fact that you included a lot of indie games as well. So, Which is really strange, because I'm not typically an indie okay. game guy, but uh, this year, I don't know, it seems like the smaller studios are coming out with some pretty cool shit. Yeah, they're making the games we want to play, which is cool thank and, you steam and for a price that we're willing to pay as well i mean you know yeah. every episode we sound like cheap pricks because it's like nah, i'll only buy it on sale <laughs> right, right, right. But i spent 350 on video games this week you I'm know a cheap the... bastard <laughs> <laughs> actually yeah you did yep you cheap i i don't want to spend uh i the last game i spent a lot of money on south, south park, park. Yeah. Sixty dollars, and I haven't touched it since. I got about. It comes down to it comes down to value proposition, doesn't it? I mean, you can have just as much fun with a five dollar game as you can with a sixty dollar game. Why spend sixty dollars on a game? Right, more so. I, I will never touch South Park again unless they come up with a uh, DLC, and even then, I probably have to pay for it. So, I mean, if you look yeah. at Pro Force, I've sunk in twenty hours. Uh, Spelunky, I've thrown in fifteen hours. Um, a lot of the the smaller, simpler, cheaper games, I'm getting shit tons of gameplay and enjoyment from and they didn't cost me much yeah and even yeah. goat simulator like I've, I've dunked about five hours into that it was a ten dollar <laughs> game like <laughs> I, I spent a buck 25 on the binding of isaac during a sale many yep. years ago and i've put 300 hours into that game so <laughs> that's buck 25 yeah and, i think it owes you money <laughs> yep, that's that's why I'm picking up Rebirth Day and Date because Edmund Edmund McMillan deserves my money. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Binding is Isaac, man. People go really deep into that game. It's crazy. Oh yeah, it's it's a deep game. But it just goes to show, like a lot of the major label games, uh, do they really need to go to that level nowadays? I mean, I definitely I appreciate like Batman uh, Arkham Knight. The amount of effort and story and and stuff that goes into that, uh, Tomb Raider, the the reboot, um, very beautiful, very thought provoking and in, involved games that I enjoyed the experience. But uh, you know, those are when they first came out. They're triple A, so they're like forty, fifty, sixty bucks. Uh, whereas a ten dollar game, I can get just as much fun. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you wait a couple of months, you can. Usually get those sixty dollars games for, <laughs> you know, for ten, twelve bucks. So. Oh yeah, I, I guarantee you that uh, South Park will be on the summer sale. I mean, Saints Row, Saints Row was four was on sale this week, right? For I think it was seventy five percent off. Yep. Yeah, yeah was, one they were letting it go real cheap. Yeah, I, I, I picked know. it up at the Christmas sale for really cheap. It was, <laughs> I think it was like four bucks. Oh wow! Four Saints, Row, was, Saints Row four. Yeah, it was really or cheap. You three. Hang on, let me let me see you. I don't know. Is there a record where it shows you how much you pay for a game? Uh, no. I don't think they let you see that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even installed it. That's that's weird. <laughs> Uh, Actually, that that brings up another another news po- post that I saw, or another news story that I saw this week. Something like twenty five percent of Steam games are never installed. 
Yeah, I was I hearing something it. about that. Yep. Makes sense. Twenty five percent. I mean there's there's a lot of bundle titles in there, I'm sure. I mean I've got titles in my in my list that I will never install because they came as part of a bundle and I just have no interest in playing. You'll them. never play Flora's Fruit Farm. That is <laughs> Shocking. Well, let me have a look. Let me have a look at Are my list. Are you kidding? Here. That's I mean, Brian's favorite game. He talks about it all the time at work. Flora's Flora's Fruit Farm? No, no. that was a bundled game. That's on my list. I have no idea. <laughs> I got uh, where is it? Juice Two, uh, <clears throat> Beat Buddy. That that's a real winner of a game. Uh, Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams. That one was yeah. Juice Two <laughs> Hot Import Nights. I, I got that. One that. Too. I don't know where I got that one from. Yeah, I know. Starseed Pilgrim, that was a part of a humble bundle, and I gotta tell ya, mm-hmm. that was a, a low install, play, uninstall within five minutes. Yeah, I've had games like that as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but hey. yeah. more often than not, they're good. Mm-hmm. More often than not, yeah. Yep. Anybody else have anything to say? I, that's it for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I've. Yeah, I think uh, I think at that point we should just Some kill it. General jerk assery. Well, congratulations again to our our Twitter winner um, yeah. of the FTL key. Cool. All right, guys. I, I I'm gonna call it there. I'm gonna go to bed. Yep. Excellent. That's a podcast. Yay. All right, boys. That's a good show. All right. Good night. Mmm. This cake looks dirty. Beer time. Beer. <laughs> Are you allowed to have beer? <laughs> 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 I spent three fifty on video games this week. Oh, you know, cheap <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, you did. <laughs> I thought you do a can on a spring. <laughs> can you hear? Is this better? Oh, dude! Why don't you use that every other podcast? <laughs> <Yeah>. no. <laughs> I'm gonna eat my Easter Cheerios box. So sad. (laughs) In my little apartment alone. Hello there. Hello. Hello, (laughs) Mr. (laughs) Pan. Are you there? Hey, you're not supposed to be like Sorry. Oh, that's so going in the outtakes. Hear us? I think he missed all of it, but that's okay. I guess the mic is on even when I'm not connected. That's weird. I couldn't hear you guys. That's okay.